Okay, so today I have um, a new video for you. I've got a RevD RDX. Um, after watching videos such as the FPS Drift um, podcasts, the guys down at Scale Drift, they just keep rating these RDXs and I just think um, it's time to give it a go. So I bought myself an RDX. I'm gonna um, do probably three videos. So this is gonna be the first video, which is just gonna be the build. Um, just me thinking about the, the quality of the plastics and so on and the quality of the, of the instructions and etc. So if you're looking to build an RDX, this might be a useful little video for you to watch. Um, then the second one is going to be just testing it. And then the third one is going to be a competition of the RDX versus my um, YD2, um, which is quite a well-developed YD2. There's probably better YD2s, but it's pretty good. Um, and if it can beat that, then clearly it's a, it's a pretty good chassis. Um, and we'll see which one um, I end up keeping because I think I'm going to keep the winner. That might be the challenge. But okay, let's get into it. Um, I've got a GoPro today. So the GoPro is also recording from a different angle. It's going to give us some time lapsey stuff. So um, without further ado, let's get on with the build. So first impressions, pretty typical. Bag full of bits. Standard, chassis, standard. Another bag full of bits, standard. Nice little set of stickers. Uh, tools, although I've already got my tools ready. Um, nice that they come with some sticky stuff to stick your servos and so on down with. Uh, destructions, standard. Uh, images, all parts, that's pretty helpful if you were to buy any replacement bits and stuff like that. Anyway. We'll get that out of the way. And let's get on with the build. So we've got all my parts laid out, got all my bags laid out, full geek action, um, and my instructions. Everything's pretty straightforward. Everything's in bag order, so you just work your way through the bags. It's just like building Lego. Other tools and equipment that you might want, um, obviously you can use the tools that they supply, but uh, these hex, um, screwdrivers essentially, um, Allen keys you can get from places like Drift Managing and so on, about 10 or 15 quid, super, super useful, make the job easier. Um, clippers or side cutters just for cutting off the, the parts off here, um, although again you can probably snap them off, but I want them super de uh, neat. Um, you can use um, a Stanley blade for trimming off any of the burrs and details, um, and that's what I'm going to be doing as I go along. Um, video, I'm going to try and keep to a minimum. We'll go with the time lapsey stuff. I've put it on fairly detailed so you can pause it and see the bits that I'm getting up to. Um, but I will um, come back to video when there's anything important that you need to know. Okay, that's the first part done. Um, nothing really to write home about. I think the plastics are really nice. Um, they feel really quality. It's almost like that sort of sintered reinforced plastic which has got like little bits of um, granules in it almost like, like not, it's not carbon fibre obviously, but you can just feel that it's like got a quality to it, um, which you get, which you expect from RevD, so you know, it's good stuff. Um, no real dramas on the first one, just note that the ball bearings, there's two different sizes in the pack, there's a smaller one and a larger one. Um, so if you put it together to begin with and it feels weird, that's probably good you picked up a small one. Um, once you've done it, just make sure there's no play in the arms. So there's, you've got those arms nipped up um, and you've got no play in them. Um, I've just got to finish off building the next part. And there we have it, my completed bell crank. You do get a few little spare shims. And you'll notice in the instructions, it says, please use these according to the backlash, backlash situation. So depending on if you've got play in these parts or movement, you can add some in there. It didn't say so, but I put some in that position there, between that part there and the arm, just because it was it just felt a bit weird putting a bearing straight up against the part. That did seem to take a little bit out. Um, but other than that, I can't really feel any backslash right now. Sorry, backlash, not backslash. I can't really feel any backlash right now, but it's quite hard when it's all wibbly wobbly in my hands. So what I'm gonna do is continue to build it, and if I need to whip a part off later um, and put an extra um, shim in, then I will do that. But keep those safe for later. 
Okay, so the next part is to install this front part of the suspension. One part it says in the bottom right here is that you can install this lower pin on the positive or um, negative, which means essentially you're moving the uh, lower part of the suspension lower or higher. I guess that gives you a little bit more ride height in the bottom um, of the car. Um, but for the purpose of this video, I've decided I'm gonna continue to make it as it suggests. So essentially that says installed on the positive side, which is what I've done. You can comment below if you feel that it should be positive or negative. I'd be interested to hear your thoughts. But essentially, um, I'm trying to build this box fresh, fresh to test it. So I'm going for exactly what the instruction says all the way through. There we go, that's all done. Moving nicely. Uh, I did make one slight error and put this piece on upside down so it was below the arms. What a donkey. Uh, easy to do though, there's like four different ways around that could go. So when you're assembling it, just make sure that this arm here is on the top side. You can just see it sticking uh, just north of the, of the arm there. Um, and this is on the top side facing backwards. And then you should get that right. Not like me. That's the back part built, ready to go. A um, couple of things to note on the instructions that uh, were quite hard to spot was these tiny little markers, the 45B bit, which just show you which way around the arms go, so you get those parts right. And at the back here, um, although it says certain numbers like rear sus mount, front and rear is clearly marked there, so you get it the right way around when you build it. Um, and then that part just bolts on. Next part is the differential, so I'm up to bag five. I've been working about half an hour. Nice easy one. That's the diff assembled. It's a shame they just don't come with a ball diff. Um, I know that a lot of people say that um, one of their first mods is to change the diff out for something. I think if I change the diff on this one, I'm gonna get a posh one like a Rhino or something. But we'll see how it goes if I keep the car. At this point, I'm just putting the gearbox together. Just to note that if you've got a shorty or a long battery, there's two different mounts to choose from here. I run shorties, so I've picked the, uh, the mount with the long T-shape on it. If you run long batteries, you need that one there. Um, and that's what it says in the instructions. Um, also, while I've been building it, just a tip is as you're assembling it, just every now and again, once you've got the casing together, is just to spin the the wheels just to make sure, spin the gears just to make sure that nothing's overly tight. Everything feels really good. It's tell you what, this is a super easy kit to assemble. Like I said, I think the plastics are a bit of a joy. Some nice pieces here like the aluminium gearbox mount obviously to stop the motor from moving. Um, I really like the chassis. I think the fat chassis almost felt cold to begin with when you pick it up. I was a bit like, I had to sort of double take myself that it wasn't an aluminium chassis, but it's a really nice quality piece of plastic for sure. So yes, it's plastic fantastic, but it is pretty good too. Next part of assembling the battery holder, I've gone for the shorty setup because I run shorty batteries. It does have some little extra spaces for you to space bits out a bit wider if your battery is a little bit longer, but it does say obviously check the size of your battery. So there you go, there's my battery. And it fits in there perfect. So I'm gold on that one. Um, because of that, there's gonna be loads of spares of different options and bits here. So I'm just gonna keep following through and trying not to miss any bits out. But yeah, that's getting a little bit busy and a little bit confusing for my brain. But uh, that's right, happy with that. Let's keep going, putting the spur gear on. Interestingly as well, the spur gear is different to normal spur gears. So I guess that's kind of a monopoly on their part to try and make you buy their spur gears. Or I'm probably guessing you can buy an aftermarket holder for your spur, so you can change it from one of these ones with the little cross shape on the back to um, a proper spur. Okay, so I'm one and a half hours into my build now um, and I'm taking a break in a sec. Um, but you can see that I've got the majority of the chassis built. I've got the shorty battery chosen. I've just opened bag eight. I love the little disc brakes. Um, I've had bought a few of these from AliExpress for different cars in the past. And I have to say, they've been rubbish. Like the fit has been rubbish. 
they haven't fitted nicely over the um, splines and over the, the little uh, pins. Um, so I've ended up just not using them or giving them away in fact. Um, but so I'm really pleased to have, finally have a chassis with some disc brakes with actual calipers because that's just, uh, that's cool, isn't it? Everyone knows it's cool. Uh, rear hubs in this set, um, rear shafts. Um, it would be good to see how these perform over time. Had a couple of the YD2 ones destroy themselves. Um, not had any Yokomo ones pull themselves to pieces yet. So I'm just going to check that they've got the grub screws nice and tight and bits inside. Um, but yeah, there's bag eight ready to go. One and a half hours in to the build. Um, let's carry on. There you go, there's all the rear hub assembly assembled, all working fine. Um, it's quite a nice little setup, it's fairly easy to do, all the bearings push in nice and easy, there's no real problems. I'm guessing one of the first things that people will do on these chassis so far is change these arms out so they can adjust their camber. I know Rev D will have set it up for a, a general setting and a, and a pretty good setting, but it's the reason why we avoid RTR cars, isn't it? Um, you know, we can put our own settings on, especially if you run things like Valino tyres, you're going to want them a bit flatter at the back and stuff like that. And then, of course, this bit here, which looks super cheap. But um, yeah, the rest of it's going so well so far. I'm just now assembling front hubs. Okay, so that's all the front section assembled. Uh, one little detail that I missed that you probably won't because you'll actually be reading the instructions um, is that the calipers are front to rear. I know that notice the disc still front to rear, but I don't. I just figured that was to go over the drive shaft or something. But actually, they're sized and the calipers uh, only go on one. So I put one on the rear and it was too tight. No, the other way around. I put the rear one on the front and it was too tight. So don't be that person. Uh, get the right around. And now I'm on to the shocks. So shocks are pretty OCD. If you've not built any shocks before, you need to take your time. Um, I always have a bit of tissue to collect um, any oil up from the um, shock build because you're going to get some come out the top when you put the, the uh, top seal on it. Um, and then I used a scalpel to clean up all the little parts, feeling for any rough bits, particularly on the little uh, parts that go inside the pistons. So the four hole pieces there, um, they actually kind of snapped off. The plastic's a different type of plastic. Um, so just be careful when you're taking those off um, and then use the um, a little scalpel or even you could use like a nail file type material just to tidy off the little rough pieces. But it just wants to be super, super smooth. So it's buttery smooth when you build the shocks. Um, if shocks drag or um, feel wrong, like they don't feel smooth when they're built, that's probably something you've done wrong. Okay, but we'll get on with that and we'll carry on back with the time lapse. There we go, that's the majority built now. I've just got my shocks done, feeling nice and smooth. Obviously the front feeling much stiffer than the rear. Interesting to see compared to loads of other chassis, you've got hardly any adjustment here in the top and the angle of the suspension. Um, I'm guessing that different body posts, uh, sorry, different upper suspension mounts um, allow different movement and people space them differently, I imagine, as they get into the chassis and, and tune it more to how they want to drive. But it'll be really interesting to see, as it's set up exactly out of the box, how that compares to my YD2, which I've obviously messed around with uh, quite a lot. Uh, last bits to do, I've just got some body post um, stuff to put on. I'm not actually gonna put the, the body posts on, which have, the, um, have the, the clips. I'm gonna put the bumpers on and bits and barbs um, and the rear diffuser thingy. Um, and then I'm just gonna leave it at that because if I do keep the car, I'll be running some magnet mounts. Um, so if you are gonna magnetize your shell, I'd totally recommend you either look into the RDX magnet kit or a stealth magnet kit, which are fairly cheap, um, which you can mess around with. Um, incidentally, if you just wanted a tip on that, I usually run 20 mil rear magnets and 15 mil front magnets. Um, you can then unclip it at the front because the 15 is a little bit easier for it to unclip and it peels off the, the 20s at the back. But your shell very rarely comes off on track that way around. Whereas when I found if I had 15 mil magnets all around, 
um, my shell gets knocked off a little bit more um, when somebody inadvertently hits you. Right, last bits to go. And there you have it, one built RDX ready to be tested. So thoughts on the chassis so far, um, I think it's they're built well. I think there's loads of structure going on. I really like the way the bulkhead goes together. Um, I like the way the gearbox goes together, which was pretty easy. Um, one thing it didn't say in the gear, in the um, instruction manual was about putting any grease onto the gears, but it does supply you with some little uh, black grease. So I'm just gonna put a little bit of that on the gears. I think um, I'll get in through this top little access hatch, I guess, and that's what that's for. So you can just put a bit of um, oil into your gearbox, which I quite like. Um, I think the shocks are buttery smooth. I've heard people comment about the shocks being really nice and smooth, even though they're, they're plastic ones, which is, is pretty nice. Um, it does feel a, a, bit, a bit bottom end, you know. It's one of these arguments that people would say, uh, and people like Sweeps have said it in the um, FPS Drift um, podcast, is like, would you take Plastic Fantastic, The Drove, Amazing, or would you take All Singing, All Dancing, Alley and Carbon? Um, and most people would pick the Plastic Fantastic if it drove better. Um, so it'll be very interesting to see how this goes. So this is build video one, essentially. Um, I'm going to do a second video which is going to be released next week which is going to be down the track um, testing the um, RDX and seeing how it goes whether we like it whether we dislike it um, and yeah so far I think compared to something like the YD2 or the um, Sakura D5 or D4 or you know a lot of other different chassis that I've put together over, over the time um, I think this went together really nice and easily. Um, I think that the um, it felt like the, the screws went into the plastic really nicely. It wasn't too hard. Um, God, I remember the first D4 I built, uh, you know, the plastics were a nightmare. Like the, the thread just wouldn't take into the plastic. It was really nice to do. Um, I think the shims are quite nice. They're quite, they're, they're um, the right amount. Like you can feel, you know, there's a tiny, if any, movement in any of these arms, which is really quite nice. Um, yeah, I think it's good. I think the gearbox feels nice and smooth. Um, shame they didn't put a normal spur gear holder on there. That's definitely something that I would do if I kept it. Um, shame that there's not more positions for shocks, but do we need them yet? We don't know. Um, and of course, you know, non-adjustable arms. So you, you can adjust your, your camber, I suppose, by putting some different spaces into here or taking that spacer out and putting more spaces in the bottom arm. But you can't adjust your toe at all. Um, you can't adjust your rear camber, um, although you can adjust the, the arm position, the inside, so I suppose you could get some large amounts of camber movement by switching around which holes you're going to, um, which would adjust things like your roll centre. Um, but everything else seems, seems really nice, seems really smooth. Um, steering feels quite tight to, and, and lacking any form of play in that. I'm just going to need to check on some parts there, make sure that's all correct. Um, and we'll give it a run down the track in the next video. Thanks for watching. I hope if you build an RDX, then um, this was helpful to you to see if you're doing it right or if you wanted to watch this video before you even went away to buy one. Um, like I say, part one, part two next week. Thanks for watching. Bye.